Welcome everybody to the Beat Cancer Answer Weekly Call. The date is March the 7th of 2024. Thank you everyone for joining us. We have a couple um, new guests with us and a couple friends that uh, we've met before. So always a pleasure to have everyone on. Uh, quick disclaimer, nothing that you hear in this call is intended to be taken as explicit medical advice. Always consult with an appropriate medical professional on any tips or, or tricks or information that you are uh, feeling like implementing into your health regimen. With that said, uh, another bit of housekeeping. Please, if you are not currently or actively speaking, mute yourself. And uh, those has, that has different ways to do so if you are phoned in or if you are on the app. If you are on the app, at the bottom left, there will be a microphone symbol. You can click that and it will mute you. And Catherine, do you remember what the what the shortcut is for people? Star six. Star six. Star six. Mm -hmm. star six. All right. So if you are on the phone, phoned in, hit star six, and that will mute you. By all means, when you have a question or a comment that you'd like to pose, you can unmute yourself. Uh, but particularly if you have background noise going on where you are, it can be very distracting for the rest of the call. So please do be sure to mitigate that. So. We have an open forum Q&A style call tonight, and uh, we'll kick it off by getting to know some of our new guests. So I would love for anyone that is new to the call to go ahead and introduce yourself, and I uh, would love to hear about what has brought you to today and if there's anything that we can help you out with. So in no particular order, if uh, Deb, Deb yeah. DeBossi would like to get started, by all means, I'd love to hear what your story is, Deb. Yeah, sure. Do you hear me? Because I'm. We can hear you. Work with you. Beautiful. Okay. So um, I was diagnosed August of 2020 with um, stage three triple negative breast cancer. The wisdom of the doctors were they gave me 18 to 24 months as my expiration date, and as of well, today I'm well, <laughs> and I'm not sitting in a jar on somebody's uh, fireplace mantle. So my biggest problem that I'm coming up with now, because I've been doing this holistically since then, uh, been to two clinics in Mexico, had my surgery in Mexico. Um, I am now old enough to have Medicare, and I just got two lovely letters from Medicare saying, the PET scan that was requested for me has been denied because I have chosen to not do standard of treatment. Any ideas how I can get this thing to get going so I can get a test done? Uh, that's a, that is a tricky situation when we start dealing with assorted, you know, insurance companies and this and that because, you know, these institutions, they have their pathways that they like to follow and they really – are very often not friendly towards going through that pathway. But firstly, as an introduction, I would like to say thank you for being willing to share your story. And, you know, I appreciate the sense of humor that uh, you're able to approach the scenario with, right? Because it's important to stay laughing and stay smiling. And, you know, it, it's amazing that you're still here. But does, if anyone else has a particular answer for how to navigate that scenario of obtaining the testing, please, please do weigh in. Catherine, do you have any weigh-ins with that? And welcome, Carl. Yes, um, uh, Deb, quite often uh, when you're having difficulties with insurance companies like that, the easiest thing for you is to find an oncologist who will work um, with you and, and allow um, integrative medicine. So someone that he knows who also does integrative medicine and so that they'll cooperate together and then the insurance will help. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to do any of the standard of care. I don't want to do any chemo. I don't want to do any radiation. I can't just have another mastectomy, but I don't want any of that me medical stuff at all. Can I, can, I start, can I jump in for a minute? This sure. is Adrian. Um, I, I went through the same thing. Um, what's your name, Catherine? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I went through the, the similar um, thing. I was diagnosed with cancer, and this was like eight, eight, nine years ago. And 
they said, oh, we're going to start with chemo. And first of all, the, I had questions. You know, where is this cancer? You know, um, my doctor said it's coming up in my in a, in a testing, but it's not pinpointing where it is. If you don't know where it is, what are you going to do chemo with? Where, what's your target? You know, explain it to me. You have to come to them with a edu- like like an educated person. Educate yourself. Read up on it. You know, I did a lot of research, and cancer runs in my family, and so. I, I asked people, I looked things up, I asked doctors, and I said, I'm not going to just, and I've, I've known people with cancer who did chemo, and th- that's not, to me, a positive um, way to go at it. You know, I know it depends on different factors, but I didn't have those factors that I knew of, and the doctors couldn't give me any return, so I just said no, and I started going online to um, other oncologists and other people for some other um, alternatives. And like I said, this was, you know, now that I think about it, almost nine years ago. And um, when they finally came up with a testing, first the insurance didn't want to pay for my repeat testing. And I'm like, no, I have a right to get a second opinion and a third opinion. And sometimes you got to fight the insurance company because they look at the money. That's all they look at. They don't care about your health. They look at the money they're spending and the money they can get from your insurance. Once we diagnose her, you know, oh, man, we can get this, we can get that, we can get not on my dime. You know, so sometimes you got to fight them because they just want to go, and they wanted to go into chemo. What do you – What's your target with chemo? <laughs> they couldn't answer that question. You know, so I... So, so what was your approach with uh, with the insurance companies then? Did they or did they not help you? They end up helping me, but okay. I end up going to a um, naturalist. And that's why, you know, I love this, this podcast whole thing because most of the doctors on here a more naturalist. They're not quick to say medicine, medicine, medicine. Um, more money, more money, more money. Um, so I went to a naturalist and we talked about symptoms and stuff. And I said, well, I don't have these symptoms. I don't have that symptom. And then when they do the testing, they said they don't see it. I mean, I had to go through a bone specialist and he took a piece of bone out. Well, let's see if it's in your bone. How can you say I have cancer, but I can't? We can't find it. And I don't know a whole lot about chemo, but I said with chemo, don't you have to target a spe- specific area? And they're like, well, usually. I said, well, you're not going. I'm not a guinea pig, so I just refuse. And I know people. I've met people both online and in real life that had cancer that don't have cancer anymore. And it took me nine months of going to different places, doctors and then, you know, uh, taking um, bone marrow, checking my blood, doing this. And then finally the oncologist that I went to at the Cancer Center of America in Florida said, you know what, Ms. Canton, just go back to your doctor and in six months tell her to test you again because we're not seeing anything now. I said, you're not seeing anything now? She says, no. And we we want you to be tested again in six months. I said, the devil is a liar. They ain't going to test me no more. (laughs) I'm done. And I haven't gone back. And I haven't had any problems or anything since. So sometimes you got to trust your gut and trust your mind and don't blindly follow these doctors. And, and, and uh, Deb, um, in answer to your question, um, most certainly uh, uh, going, like as, as uh, Adriana said, going to a naturopath, a lot of naturopaths do link up with some of the oncologists, and it might be yeah. easier to go that route as well, because uh, mm-hmm. yeah, look at that uh, as, as, as an alternative for you in your area as well. Um, um, where are you from? I'm um, in the Atlanta, Atlanta area. 
Oh, they definitely have some in Atlanta. Yeah, there are quite a few, actually. Yes. So, um, by all means, uh, find a natural path in the closest to your community and, and, and ask for them to link in with um, an oncologist that will work with you um, and, and, and support integrative care, okay? Now, you said that you did have a, um, a, a mastectomy? Yeah, I did that. Okay. And uh, you're stage three, correct? I was diagnosed stage three. Now I'm considered zero, I guess, because there's no signals whatsoever, but I just want to stay on top of it, obviously, because it's still just a few years old for me. Absolutely, and, that's, and that is what's critical. You've had a mastectomy, and, and one of the best things that you can do now is um, holistically to heal yourself. This can be done multiple ways. Number one, get a cancer coach. I, I highly recommend a cancer coach. And, uh, and becancer.org, um, when you go onto our website, we have, uh, depending on where you live, tons of cancer coaches. Uh, some of them are nurses, there's nutritionists, uh, everything across the board, well, whatever you would like. Uh, and they will help you in looking at ways to, uh, to modulate where you are and then a plan of care, set a plan of care that will keep you healthy, okay? Things like um, they'll talk to you about nutrition and specifically healthy food choices. And, and, and so, how so Catherine, this has been my field forever, so I don't want you to kind of waste your energy on explaining this. I've been holistic since I was like 12 years old, and I went to chiropractic school. And I'm very, this is why I'm doing well is because of everything I'm doing for myself. So that's right. not the problem. The problem is I just want to monitor the darn thing. That is my biggest deal. That is my biggest deal. And, and you know what? Go yeah, on right? and do that. Fine. Fine. I don't hear you at all. I don't hear you at all. Hey, Evadine. Evadine. Yeah. Thank you. No, she's okay. They're muted now. I can't get her. Yeah. So, uh, you muted her. Was that who you were talking to? Yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't tell if she was trying to weigh Hi. in. Hi. Can you hear me now? Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. I can hear you now. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. yes. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. No Is that better? No, we can yeah, hear you. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Good evening, everyone. So um, I just wanted to met well, first, um, good evening again. And I wanted to find out if the young lady has Aflac. Um, mm -hmm. If you have AFLAC, you may be able to get monetary support to pay for the PET scan, but also a Meriplan. A Meriplan is a health benefit company that reduces their fee for service. They reduce what you have to pay. Now, of course, we would like for it to come through the traditional medical institution, especially if you have medical coverage. But we do know that their protocols and their, their ways of lining things up isn't necessarily conducive to our well-being. But a Meriplan will discount what you have to pay. And if you have AFLAC's cancer policy, you may be able to get those funds out of that policy. And, and I, I don't have any of these now. Can I get this once I've already been diagnosed? Well, you can get a Meriplan anytime. Yes, you can get a Meriplan okay. anytime. That's going right. to discount your fee for service moving forward. Um, AFLAC, mm -hmm. if you don't have it, you cannot get it. Um, right. And what I always share with people, sometimes we don't think we are fund what fund ready you know we don't have funds but if you have whole life insurance and you've had it for a while you can pull out some of the cash value to pretty much take care of yourself and get the things done that you want while we fight the fight of the medical institutions doing as adrian said you know like keep pushing keep pushing like Catherine said find a naturopathic practitioner who will then kind of funnel the way through 
with the medical industry to help you get what you need. But in the meantime, those are just some suggestions. Yeah, some I have. Right. I want. I want to piggyback on your uh, your life insurance, whole life insurance. That's that's a world that I know. Uh, a better option than pulling out funds from your life insurance, your whole life insurance policy. It's better to borrow against it, and I'll tell you why. When you when you pull out, then you then you start to uh, negate your your um, death benefit. But if you borrow against it, you you don't have to pay that back. I mean, they're going to charge you interest, and even if they charge you interest to the day you die, uh, it's only going to be pulled out what uh, at the end to whomever it's going to benefit, only that amount of money will be pulled out, and it doesn't compromise the structure of your policy. That's correct, Carl. It's, 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 much, be better, it's, it's a much better yeah. way to go. I thank borrow. you for changing the word, but that's what I meant when I said pull out some of your cash value yep, because yep. It, you, know, you can borrow from it. So thank you for clarifying that word. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. correct. And a lot of people don't realize that, but that's where a lot of things could get accomplished in your life with those whole life policies. Um, but AmeriPlan, you can go to AmeriPlan.com, and okay. um, it will link you into finding that. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. For those on the phone, I put into the chat um, a, an e-book that I wrote. It's The Importance of a Holistic Cancer Coach and Any Support uh, Cancer Support Team. Uh, you can download it right out of the chat. But if you're on the phone, you can request that from me at support at beatcancer.org. I'd be happy to send it to you. Uh, I know this isn't what you need. The, I, I missed who was asking the question because I got on the call late. But for anybody else that would like that, please uh, email me at support at beatcancer.org. Did you catch that, Deb? It, it might not be for her. Yeah, yeah. She, she said she's had a list to go already. Um, but yeah, anybody that wants that, it, uh, it's a great little resource. Yeah, and and um, that you've all, you've done the right thing, Deb, by uh, first of all choosing a holistic um, method, uh, and, and obviously you said you're very comfortable with that, which is great. So so you already know that um, healthy food choices, stress reduction, plenty of sleep and rest. Uh, these are some of the key things that are going to make a difference for you. And, uh, and getting the good support so, um, psychologically. So try your best to, um, to work with that, a natural path or uh, someone who you know, in, you know who does integrative medicine and then find that avenue and also you know, your health, um, find out about your life insurance there. That sounds like a very good option as well. And sometimes when you even speak to your own insurance company, ask for some another opinion from someone else. Go up the chain, okay? Oh, okay. All right. I just, I, um, I know um, uh, sometimes it, it, it feels bothersome, but uh, do you know what? They're uh, ingrained to say um, initially no, and then you have to go a little higher and push a little, a little more, and advocate for your care. Say you've had your mastectomy, but you want to choose um, things that are more natural, and 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 just say I just need support in a program that I'm already instituting, and so mm -hmm. just sometimes um, they they will listen, and, and it depends on what your company is, but try to go a little higher. Push a little more. Okay. It's okay to ask okay. for your care. I want to. I want to add something to that. Uh, that uh, when it comes to insurances, I would say go and learn their policy, because it's your medical uh, freedom rights to choose whatever you think is best for your own body. And uh, just because you did not follow with standard treatment, that doesn't mean they have to deny your. Uh, you know, the, a procedure for you to have or uh, coverage for it. Just go into the policies and read uh, Dipper and see, uh, because it's against constitutional law for you to follow the, I mean, like you have your own rights, you know, uh, to choose what you think is best for you. You don't have to follow standard uh, 
you know, standard uh, procedures what you were um, offered or told about. So I would say I would dig more deeper in it and just keep calling and asking, like Catherine said and, and uh, you know, um, Kansin said, uh, ask for to speak to manager, supervisor, and um, I'm sure there's there's a ways of dealing with it, for sure. Did, did I did okay. I hear right when I got on the phone that uh, that you were that you were having trouble getting tests approved? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying yeah, okay. to get a pet scan. Right, right. So uh, it's not cancer, but I had two times limes, and I ultimately went to a limes literate doctor. But I had to, I had to, I, I got the uh, Lyme's test and it came back negative. Then the county got back in touch with me and said I was positive months later after it was too late to do urgent care for Lyme's. Uh, and uh, ultimately I had to find a doctor that was willing to, to put through the test that I needed. And I got lots of different tests, not just the West Bolt test that they give, which is a generic test um, mm -hmm. ultimately. I wound up getting a very comprehensive test. I did pay out of pocket for that, but but I did find the right doctor that that could get me the right test. And it wasn't the only test. That that was that was the big one that was out of pocket. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd definitely shopping for doctors is a good idea as well. And you might be able to find um, uh, a holistic like a holistic oncologist or an integrative doctor. There's lots of them. We, d we just got back from a con conference, and uh, most of the panel speakers were integrative doctors for cancer. Right. And, and, then, and they, uh, would, they would certainly be willing to, to, to get you the test that you need. Right. And then yeah. they might suggest you to have something else. For example, instead of MRI or PET scan, they would suggest probably something like tomography, you know, uh, more safer test than MRI or CAT scan. It all depends on if the doctors and doctors' offices would they um, mm -hmm. can request it for you. Just keep keep um, digging into it and don't be afraid to fight. Yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah. And, right, and thank you. I, I truly can uh, recommend as a as a uh, breast cancer survivor myself that uh, thermography is 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 something it's it's, it's less expensive. And it, and, and it really is something that they should cover without giving you any difficulty, okay? It's, it's much more sensitive, too. It, it picks up, oh. it picks up uh, uh, scans that, that are way, way more sensitive than mammograms and other tests. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, it, and it's non-invasive and it's non-toxic. Right. Yeah, it, it's a lot better. All right. Well, thank you. Thank You're you. You're really welcome, and, and thank you for um, coming on to uh, BeeCancer.org and, and to our BeeCancer Enter program and, and participating, and I hope you'll come back and keep asking questions because that's what we're here for, to support you if you have any questions. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, now, I think we have a couple of, of other new people here. Um, ba ba ba. We got Todd Gray, it looks like. I don't know who that mm -hmm. is. I, that, that I, I, I that don't recognize before. Todd. Todd, did you want to introduce yourself? Or if you have questions, uh, ask. OK. If nobody's got questions, it, uh, well, nobody objects. There's a few other people that um, that were phoned in from the beginning that. Uh, oh, right here, that 973 number. Yeah, I think that's Forrest joining us. Um, oh, but there okay. are several numbers. Anyone at this moment in time, if you have a particular question or a comment or something you'd like us to address or something that you have going on that you'd like some assistance with, please do feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question. If you are phoned in, you can go ahead and hit star six, and that will unmute you so you can ask your question. On the mic. Also, too, if you're on the computer, feel free to type questions in the live chat while there's a talking so we can address your questions right after. I call. I don't have any questions right now. This is Adrian. You know I get on every once in a while. 
listen. Thank you so much. <laughs> what you have to say, and um, and every once in a while I'll chime in, but. I appreciate you all coming on. Oh, thank you for um for 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 speaking out too and um and and helping because you know every little bit helps. Yeah, great suggestions by the way. Awesome. Yeah. How about the number six four six five one zero seven eight eight four? That's a number I don't recognize. Would you like to ask a question to the group? No. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, you can. I'm sorry I'm outside. I was listening to the show. I have a question. Um, I have an immune problem. It was stage four. It's about maybe three or four years now. And I noticed when, you know, I do holistic stuff. I did, uh, you know, the regular treatment, you know, with the doctors, chemo and stuff like that. And I noticed that... Um, they were talking about doing really good, and one of the things they noticed that just the blood work has always been really good. And um, my numbers are very low. And I want you to know, like, if you didn't have good blood work, will they stop the treatment? Because I noticed they kept stressing, oh, your blood work is always been great. So I'm coming to the conclusion my blood work wasn't so great, they would stop my treatment. So I just want to know if you have a comment on that. Was was anyone able to catch that, or or we might need you to repeat that, sir? I'm not sure if you're on speakerphone, uh, but it the uh, audio is coming through a bit muffled. It, it was a bit difficult to to make out. What you were what's your diet? Okay, I was stage uh, four. What kind of cancer? It was um colon. Okay. Which they had to remove some of it. Uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. I didn't catch it. Um, they always look at my blood work and they say my blood work is very good. And um, my numbers has been very low. So I want to know if my blood work, if anyone's blood work is not as bad, would they stop the treatments like, say, for chemo or something like that? I was just wondering because I know some people say, oh, the doctor said there's no more they can do, and I'm taking it because of their blood work. It's bad. So I, I, that think, was my I think what I'm gathering is his question is if the parameters of his blood work, the numbers and the indicators are very low, if that would be a reason for the oncologist to take him off of chemo versus continuing the protocols perhaps in their entirety. And I am not an oncologist, but I imagine every particular oncologist is going to interpret their the numbers and kind of follow their own experiential advisement on, on when would be the time to stop the protocol. Some might because of the numbers, and, and some might say, hey, let's carry this out in its entirety. Um, I, I think that's going to be on an individual level, depending on who it is that you are working with, what they would advise. Right. Are you are you talking about tumor markers, blood tumor markers? Is that what the test is? Well, the, the tumor markers were great. Okay. It's just I was wondering if, the, if my blood work wasn't great, but they stopped the treatment. So they kept in the treatment. They made a comment to me, which was kind of scary. They just said, you know, your blood work is always been good. You just rest at one. Yes, one percent of the people in the hospital. We have the condition, you have to want top of the 1%. I'm like, oh, they're saying, I don't like you're saying I'm doing well. Yeah, okay. uh, that's, that, that depends on oncologists, what they decide. Uh, my personal suggestion would be to get a second opinion or ask for additional testing, such as ultrasound or something else, um, and see what is the reason they would like to stop chemotherapy, you know. And, and oh, they didn't say they would. He just said they would stop it. He probably was guessing the question was, you know, blood work was bad. Would they stop it? Yeah. I guess so. Um, you know, thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, he's he's asking if it was bad, would they stop? Uh, uh, the thing is, is it, it's it's what it is they're looking at, and in particular, if it's just white cell count is low, or immunologically he's not strong, they may um, right. treatment so that they have the opportunity to allow your immune system to catch up and to right. be. So 
Um, so that would be one good reason for you to get a cancer coach that would help you um, navigate through the system and explain to you what's going on so, and, and also get you nutritively strong so your immune system is, is stable while you're going through chemo, radiation, and any other treatments. But uh, so I, I do know often they will stop treatment if immunologically uh, your, your numbers are low with a white cell count or even your red blood cell count is down. So um, don't be surprised that sometimes happens because they, they have to protect themselves too, okay? It, it's that and uh, chemotherapy does destroy white blood cells and red blood cells, a lot of cells in the, in the system. And uh, between chemotherapies, if they not go up to a certain level, they might stop the procedure. They might stop the therapy. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but that's I know why they always test the blood all the time. But mm -hmm. I notice one thing when I do the chemo, I notice when I fast before I do the chemo, the chemo doesn't affect me at all. Your strongest when when not fasting, when you have, uh, for example, juicing before so that your, your, your good cells are taking up um, all the nutrients, and when that happens, you're going to have a better response to your chemo. That's, okay. that's, yes. between, the, that's between the sessions of chemotherapy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I was um, taking wheatgrass also, mm -hmm. and they were making these comments and say, I didn't tell them what I was doing, but they said, you're doing very well. Oh, your blood work's been good, your numbers been down. And when I do the, before I do the chemo, I will fast the day before. Good. And I know it didn't affect me at all. But when I did fast, then that's when the chemo would really affect me. I just get really tired. Right. But when I fast right. before, it didn't affect me at all. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. There's a suggestions. Yeah. There's a, there's a even suggestions. I personally... Um, suggest to fast a couple of days before chemo, the day of the chemo, and a day or two after chemotherapy. Then um, yeah. it's it's a great effect um, on the body. It's like a dual dual thing, like a autophagy yeah. and plus chemotherapy. So it's like a dual effect of killing cancer cells. But I know I, I felt great, and I'm like, wow, it didn't affect me. Good, yeah. That's the I way to know. Wanna, you know. Let everybody know that um, it works for me and hopefully it can work for everybody else too. But you're right, the green juice or the wheatgrass, like I like the wheatgrass because it's very potent and you can it in one minute. And, good. You know. Good, good. And then I yeah. can fast longer when I take the wheatgrass. Yeah. So with grass, with, with, yeah, with grass is good. I did mine all the time. Yes. Yeah. And it actually yeah. cut my appetite where I can fast even longer. Mm -hmm. You're on the right way, uh, on the right path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only problem I have is with my sleep, which is very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Very welcome. Awesome. Thank Todd you. Gray, do you want to? Do you have any questions? Mr. Todd Gray, come on down. Somebody has uh, music or TV in the background. You could. Hello. Hello? Hey, Todd, how you doing? Hey, hi. Sorry, I had my headphones in and I can't talk to them. They're broken. Uh, uh, this is the first time I've ever tuned in. I just was trying to just get a vibe, be a fly on the wall, but you guys keep calling me out, so <laughs> I thought I'd say hi. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining keep... us. Oh, yeah, yeah thanks for doing this. Todd, or do you want to introduce yourself and um, why did you come on to Beat Cancer um, Answers? And, um, anything in particular? Um, I be... No, um, I've been getting these um, um, emails saying that they happen Thursdays for probably a year or so now. I don't even know who got me into that. Um, yeah. Stage four cancer twice, and I went to my lung. Um, they sent me home basically to go to hospice. That was 
a year and a half ago. So I just started the whole food, plant-based, um, juicing, a little bit of Gershon stuff, Gershon. Yeah. And uh, I'm still kicking, so... So I just peek in once in a while and see what other people are saying and what anything that's new. And so I thought I'd check you guys out. Yeah. Awesome. So somehow you must have gotten on our email list at beatcancer.org with Susan Silberstein. Oh, um, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's maybe. that's that's I'm the one who sends those emails out. So. <laughs> oh well, thank you. And I was just on the rebounder. That's why I'm out of breath. I was kind of listening and doing the oh, good for you. Another thing I've yeah, so, a little out of breath. But um, um, yeah. so, how long do you guys usually go? Like for an hour? Or yeah, yeah, hours? we're yep, an hour. We'll, we'll go seven to eight every Thursday. Oh, okay. And we're delighted to hear that you tried the Gearson diet and and that you're looking at a, um, a plant based uh, nutritional program because most certainly if, 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 if is it bowel cancer you said? Yes, uh, yes, yes, twice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, you know what? Seventeen. And uh, do you um, like uh, recommend? Sorry about that. Okay, I'm unmuted. There. What the heck? It keeps going in and out. I don't know what's happening. It keeps going in and out on me. Yeah. Did I was saying having trouble connecting today, too. But, um, oh. um, Todd, try um, some flaxseed muffins with uh, the flax powder, not the seed, but the flaxseed powder and muffins. Okay. Very, very good for, for you. And, um, and uh, try to use gluten-free uh, products in, in that. And uh, and uh, keep them nice and moist with a uh, with uh, applesauce, but no sugar, of course. Okay. But try that. Yeah. Uh, next thing, uh, I also uh, for all those who are listening on, um, if we're looking at uh, light therapy, I think um, it's nice to, to see infrared therapy in the, its use. And uh, and you're already taught doing one of the biggest things, uh, and that is. Uh, you're you're following a plant based diet and, and you're obviously taking charge of your health. That is huge. Yeah. And when you do that and stress reduction and, 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 and you're reaching out and, and, and just always want to know what's next in line, you know what? You're right. doing the whole thing. You're taking that holistic approach, yeah. taking charge of your health. Congratulations. That's not easy to do. Thank you. Well, I had to be pushed down. I got a couple taps on the shoulder from God, and finally I said, all right, I better start listening. So I did. Yep. All right. He sent me in this direction. Do you, that infrared stuff, um, I just did that too. The, um, the, it's like a sleeping bag. Yep. Have you heard of those things? I can't. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think uh, Maya might have one of those. What, infrared? Sleeping bag, yeah. In it's like a sleeping bag type Oh, they, they they come in different ways. Um, the one that I I, I don't have it, but I want to get it's like uh, just sitting at home. Oh, okay. But there is a lot of science behind it um, on infrared, especially on direct, uh, you know, target of the of the tumor cell, and it's just like a placing right where the tumor um, present. It does have a very mm -hmm. good, there's a lot of studies and research on that one, on infrared. So it's a very good thing to do. Infrared, yeah, sauna, yeah, I just... sauna is like whatever you do, um, all of those things are great. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, do, you, um, do you guys ever heard of Signatura testing? Uh, is that, um, so I've heard, but never uh, when deep diving into that. Okay. Yeah, it's like a tumor testing thing. Yeah. There's so many stuff out there. It's so hard to follow everything. And every time something new comes up, and it seems they're all great, um, like, to implement. But I usually suggest, like, to 
have what you feel comfortable with because it's impossible right. to follow everything what is coming up and what is out there. The best thing to do is just to follow up where your body feels comfortable and your, your instinct is telling you that's the right thing to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's all we've seen. Thing. We've seen a lot of we've right. seen a lot of tests come and go over the last forty six years, and uh, you know they're they're great at the time, and then they're gone. Yeah, you, you know people True. want them and you can't get them anymore. And, right. Uh, uh, so the, the, what do you guys the way, for my, sorry, the way you look at into I'm, your body is like body heals itself and what do you have to do to bring your body to that stage where it's going to start healing itself and those comes to basic stuff such as like balancing your sleep having a great diet eliminating toxin, toxins as much as you can when you put your body close to that stage it's going to heal itself so and that's what you have to focus on bringing in uh, all the nutrients making sure that they're absorbing very well in your system and the um, utilizing every supplement you use or every nutrients you use in helping you heal. So that's the main way of looking into your health. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of suggestions out there. It's, it's, sometimes it confuses me even more, <laughs> like when I look yeah. into that, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I do. I know. Do you guys um do you have a special certain way that you suggest monitoring say like it's been about a year and a half out now so I'm getting to my 2 year mark would there be something cuz I kind of I guess fired my oncologist cuz he told me to go home and die so I had no reason to go back to him but I don't know how to monitor it now. Just a, I would say finding a holistic integrative oncologist or just to even uh um doctor any doctor and just asking okay. to run some tests on you and just making okay. sure uh you know they're all normal that's what i would say staying on the top of it yeah like that yeah yeah so just go to an integrative or a natural path and, and see if they will just run your blood markers and just for monitoring and they'll they'll do that um every um um, every year or two for you, in whatever whatever you're comfortable with. And a lot of uh, coaches also are capable to order certain tests mm -hmm. of uh, running and just making sure that um, your balance nutritionally and hormonal balance are all um, all there. And uh, oh. yeah, the coaches do those things too. So, I don't want to be a hog. I'm sorry to be hogging all the time, but wh wh where do you find the cancer coach? What's that about? <laughs> You're on a call with a bunch of them. <laughs> Go to our site, yeah. um, um, beatcancer.org, and there's, uh, depending okay. on where you live, you can put on in uh, your uh, state or, or province, and, uh, and, and, and they'll give you a list of cancer coaches that are in your area. Yeah, that's one of the Thank programs you. that we run here at BeeCancer.org. In addition to these calls, in addition to our in-house counselor, we've trained hundreds of cancer coaches all around the world. And each one has their own individual uh, levels of, and areas of expertise and levels and areas of credentials and experience in different health arenas, whether they are themselves oncologists or nurses or other sorts of holistic healing practitioners. You can find a full list of our coaches at beatcancer.org. And then if you click in the top toolbar, find a coach, that will bring up a list of all of our wonderful coaches that have filled in their information there. And you can also go to support at, um, at beatcancer.org. And, okay. and, and, and you will be able to wait for on the support area. Um, I'm sure uh, Zach or... Uh, Carl will uh, make can make a recommendation based on where you're at as well and your diagnosis and your okay, problem. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. That's very helpful. I thought I was going to just be listening, and I guess I got all <laughs> got, got well, all in on you guys. Or, um, when you have questions, and, and, and if these little things when you want to start monitoring, and and uh, but you always don't want those expenses of having to always. Uh, you know, monitoring yourself, 
starts by also um, asking appropriate questions on forums like yeah. this. Good things happen when you participate in life. You yeah. know, you gotta you gotta put yourself out there sometimes, and you gotta know. get out there. Mac. Yeah, I thought maybe I'd get at least one time to listen, but I, I'm in. But thank you, thank you for all the info. I will definitely do. I'm gonna definitely find a coach. Awesome. Thank you, Todd. You're you were a great call to, to and you give hope to a lot of people that have cancer because you were at stage four, and and you didn't you pulled through on your own. You did great. Yeah. And uh, we yeah, applaud you. you for that. And, and you know what? You. If you ever want to um, help, um, you know what? Um, becoming a cancer coach with BeatCancer.org. You know, especially when you've worked with a Gearson diet, and and and, and which is not an easy diet. Uh, I can honestly say, um, think about it. You might, there might be someone out there that you might be able to help. Right. Okay. I'll look into that. Thank you. I wanted to mention one more thing. You might be able to search the coaches too and find one that has your same particular cancer. So you might be able to identify okay. uh, that way as well. Yep. There's a lot of there's a lot of different tools that you'll see uh, to sort through the list, whether it's choosing your state, choosing your location, or choosing an area of okay. particular cancer. Okay. And okay. we have um, somebody on the 201. That's a new exchange, I think. Yeah, we have a new person joining us. Welcome, 201, ending in 6384. Uh, we have an open forum Q&A session going tonight. If you have a particular question or a comment or something that you'd like to bring to the table and get some advice or um, you know, get some get some information on, please, by all means. Now would be a wonderful time to share. And we're calling on the number 201-532-6384. Calling in, having just joined us. You have the mic. By all means, please tell us what has brought you here. If not, that's okay. Okay. All right. We have approximately nine minutes left in tonight's call. Is there anyone else, even if you've already spoken up, that would like to bring anything to the table? Any questions, any comments, any interesting pieces of information for the group's consideration? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I just want to say I spoke before, but also I want to say that I also use a device called the Beamer, and I think that really helped me out a lot because, you know, the Beamer is for the circulation. Mm -hmm. And also the Beamer comes with the red light therapy, which I just recently started using. And I know it's excellent for your skin. And I think that also helped me out also. Yeah, if I've spoken and, with several Beamer reps. Um, yep. it's, a, it's a magnetic, oh. though, no? Yep. Yeah, it's magnetic. Yeah, frequency. Frequency. Yeah. And I... um. I became a distributor because I used to go to these free classes that they have, and a lot of people there have beamers, and I took a friend with me. You know, we both went to see what it's all about, and they treated us, and my friend had a huge response, and I said, well, let me go to another meeting. I took another friend, they had a huge response. I'm like, wow. So I became a distributor, and also with the wheat graph, uh, I became a distributor, the company asked me to be a distributor. I'm like, well, why? They said, well, because you're asking so many questions. Nobody ever asked us before. I'm like, well, I'm trying to learn all I can. It's just a lot of people don't know all these things. So, you know, I share it with everybody. And, you know, that's my comment. And, and by all means, um, I, I think when we're looking at clients that are um, looking for um, can a host of cancer treatment, uh, we fully encourage a, a client to research what they're looking at. But more than anything else, it's, 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 there's no one answer. Um, light ther therapy, um, ultrasound, whatever, but, um, the Beamer is excellent as well. Diet, exercise, um, all, all of these avenues, um, and psychological support, uh, of course, also cancer coaching, whatever. This is what we're here for, to help um, you streamline your care. We want you to be able to advocate for your care and, and feel confident in doing that. So, uh, 
I, I, the fact that you're contributing tonight, thank you very much. Because yes, um, we do support Beamers. Yes. Okay, that's great. I think just so many people out there have cancer that just don't know where to turn. You know, I'm um, thinking about listening to your program. Maybe I might be a cancer coach. Cancer outfits out there, uh, you know, Healing Strong, uh, many, many. Uh, and, and just get involved and be there and, as a support and offer your services as well. Uh, but um, just uh, usually if you're on Zoom, just put your name and your phone number in chat and let them know what you do. And, and that's very neutral without pushing your product. Yeah. Many, many of coaches, including us, we all became coaches after our own experience with cancer. So um, there's a lot to deliver. There's a lot to share. Um, people have no idea uh, when they get diagnosed with cancer what to do. So our job is much needed. And it's great right. to become one, yeah. Especially if you experience cancer. Yep. Thank yeah. You. All right. Thank you guys for you know for the whole forum because everybody needs to hear this. You know, because they have no way to turn. Right. But the doctor. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You can send people right to our website. It's www. Beat cancer. B e a t cancer. Dot o r g. And it's o r g because we're a nonprofit. We've been a nonprofit practicing holistic practices for four decades or four and a half decades now. We're 46 years old. So, uh, yeah, I encourage you to send people to our site. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, I, you know, what's really exciting is just um, for me com coming off that wonderful weekend um, of the conference um, in uh, uh, West Palm Beach and how exciting it was to not only meet some of the cancer coaches that are on this call today, but um, also uh, to, to meet med many of the medical professionals that were there and uh, patients included. And it, it really is an eye-opener. So something else and everybody should be looking at is what conferences are out there that are, that are um, complementary um, cancer um, in alternative care practices and look at those and, and think about attending some of them because you really open up your mind and find out what's really new like mistletoe therapy and, and vitamin C and all the other uh, adjunctive practices that we're now using for um, IV treatments and take a look at uh, is, it, is it right for you. Yeah. Uh, th the best thing to do is get onto our mailing list. Uh, mm -hmm. I will be, uh, as, as these opportunities come up, these conferences come up, I speak directly with the people who are organizing them. I know many of the speakers and, and even the presenters that uh, are putting on the conferences, and I, I try to get discounts for hotel rooms and discounts for tickets. So uh, that would be a, a good resource. Thank you, Carl. Yep, and then I put it right out there for everybody. Yep. And if if there's no objections, I'd like to maybe make that next week's topic is to talk about the conference. And um, mm -hmm. but I'd like to just really quick mention we had what do you think, Zach? Seven, eight, nine coaches there. Yeah. And, uh, and it was great to meet everybody in person that I only see on the phone or talk to via the, the emails. Um, but the great thing I wanted to mention was many of our coaches are going on to work with other professionals in the field. They're working with uh, integrative doctors. They're working with other big people that are in the industry now. So the, the, the cancer coach course seems to be a bit of a launch pad mm -hmm. and uh, a resource for our coaches to move on to, to great things. Not all of them start a business. Some people go and wind up working for other people that are big in the business, and I think that's a that's a great testament to our coaches and to our program. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, many of us are, are, are doing our own um, workshops. We're uh, writing books. We're uh, working with integrative doctors, as, as Carla said. And we're, um, once you're confident, you know what's going on. And 
it's amazing uh, some of the experiences that we have as coaches. And, and I think it all comes to the patients and that you guys empower us. When we, when we call and ask if we can help you and, and make a difference in your life, it sure warms our hearts. So thank you. Also, too, real quick, we do have some coaches uh, that are creating nonprofits that serve underserved communities. And Forrest, if you're on the phone or anybody else from Grown Folks, please contact me. I have uh, at least two resources for you that would be great to get onto your calls or to uh, even have their own show. Mm-hmm. And we're getting close to the hour. Yes, yeah. we, are. we are just about there in a few seconds. Well, we had some great questions um, this week and some new people. We're delighted that you've come on, that you've opened up and um, have asked questions, and I hope we've been able to help you. And please, uh, come visit us um, next week and keep with us, and I hope that you will be able to contribute um, to our program and just feel comfortable in doing that. We're, we thank you very much for participating tonight. So thank you. Yep. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for the wonderful questions and the participation. Remember, the community is such a big part of what we do at Be Cancer and why we do it, because nobody has to feel alone in their diagnosis. Nobody has to feel alone in being a caretaker for anyone that has a diagnosis. We have the support structures, and we have all these wonderful people that attend these calls that are here to assist. So please tell your friends. Please come back. We we're happy to assist week in and week out. Same time, same place. You know where to find us. All right. Yeah. All right. With that, we'll say good night. Good night, everybody. And um, Carl, I come to Good night. Good night. This is great. Good night. Yep. And for any of the coaches, we will see you on the coaches call in approximately 15 minutes from now. And I have a client call, so I can't join you, but have a good week, guys. Thank you, Catherine. Have a good week, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye.